going to do something different. We're doing a poster presentation. This is the poster. So we're essentially looking to find out if Jensen is correct or not. So Jensen Fabius declared it was it could be a not unreasonable hypothesis that there are genetic causation between race gaps. And it's um, not been something that was very heated discussion for many years. And Jensen had like get bodyguards and people would slash his tires and so on. Um, and uh, kind of has been holding back the research, so we don't actually know. If people they will cite various studies that you know affirm their position, and it's small sample size. And someone else will cite an opposing study, so also small sample size. And then what do you believe? You don't really believe anything. And there is very few studies that actually try to do a, an estimate of entity as a continuous variable. Uh, there is a famous one, SCAR, but they had a sample size of only uh, 170 or something. And the correlation size you're expecting here is 0.2 or so. So you quick down analysis, you see that this is not a good idea. Um, and they didn't find a significant findings. So people have been citing that for 20 years, which is not very good. So uh, what you really, really want is you want to take a large uh, racially diverse modern data set and you want to genotype them like with a 23 me like chip and est estimate the entry of each of these and you want to plug it into a regression model and see um, does this entry predict the IQs and the social status as genetic models would predict you and you can actually see, unfortunately it's not in the poster, but you can, um, from the full model, you can see the effect size of what a hypothetical 100% European person would have in IQ. We set this to 100 or 0, and then versus whatever other group you want to, Africans or East Asians or something. And uh, that's the model output for was, was, um, the full data um, was about... Uh, 78 IQ for the African. So remember, this is not uh, for African Americans because African Americans are not 100% African. They're 80% African or so. So by the genetic model, they should be somewhat smarter than the African ones. And obviously, there's a huge environmental game uh, that's uncertain in size, so no one really knows. So that's we're trying to find out. So what we see in this plot is that we took uh, the uh, African American subsample. This is only a few hundred people. Uh, we have the whites over here. Most of the whites are 100% whites, so are Europeans, 100% European. So they're not useless for the model. Uh, so the Africans they vary a lot. We have some people who declare as white, but they're actually this, this one declares as white, but he's less than 50 percent white, so maybe he declares as both or something. Um, so basically look if there's a question here and what you think is that you see where this ends uh, and where it goes up to and this you can see is about minus one and it goes up to about 1.6 uh, here uh, so this the total genetic gap is predicted to be about uh, 1.6 uh, standard deviations and about 22 IQ points and therefore uh, 78 IQ gap and this is the same but uh, in the Hispanic sample so the Hispanic sample is problematic because 